Okay, so we know what vectors are. Vectors have another property called the norm. And the norm, we can think of it as our idea of physical length. If we want to get the distance between two points, then we get the separations, that is the um, vertical separ uh, horizontal separation and the vertical separation. And then because X and Y are perpendicular to each other, we have a right angled triangle here. Another way to think about it is we have a uh, orthogonal system, if that makes sense, a linearly independent system. I'm just sneaking a few words in there. Okay, but the point is we have a right angled triangle, we can apply Pythagoras' theorem. So if this is my distance, then this D is the um, hypotenuse. D squared is equal to the horizontal squared plus the vertical squared. Then we can apply the square root to both sides. There we have it. And by default, we take the positive root because it wouldn't make sense for a physical distance to have a negative value. That's a bit much. But anyway, so the same idea applies with a vector, because remember I said that a vector, if it's a point, it is a point away from the origin. So if I were to take this and say, well, now this is the origin. And this is, I'll just call this... Uh, v1, v2 are my components of my vector, then the norm of v, which is given with these, these two lines here, is, um, well, we have v1 minus 0 is just v1, and v2 minus 0 is just v2, and there we have it. Now, it doesn't matter. This extends to multiple dimensions. I mean, let's do it in 3D. So... We put our coordinate system here, and again we have v1, v2, and x and y are perpendicular to each other, and then v3, and that's perpendicular to, well, I mean it is perpendicular to the y-axis, but it's also just perpendicular to, if we look at the whole xy plane, it's perpendicular to any point there. So what we'll do is we'll take this hypotenuse here and then run up and we are perpendicular to the hypotenuse. Long story short. So uh, we have this hypotenuse, we say the hypotenuse squared, this is the hypotenuse on the xy plane down here is equal to this v1 length, v2 length. Ah, whoops, it's the square, not the h. Anyway. And then, well, the length of our vector, by Pythagoras' theorem, simply by the fact that we have an orthogonal system, is the hypotenuse length squared plus the third component squared but really that hypotenuse squared is this one so it's v1 squared v2 squared v3 squared okay so my point is that um the norm can extend to any number of dimensions that we want. We can have a 10-dimensional vector. It doesn't make geometrical sense, but we can measure its norm. And then the question is, well, um, the norm is sort of like the length, which is a geometrical idea. What does the norm mean for a 10-dimensional vector? We can kind of think of the norm as a measurement of... Uh, measurement of... Yeah, I want to say distance, I want to say size, but we don't have, I guess we kind of do have distance. It's just not something that we can graph in 10, 10 dimensions. Anyway, I'll leave that point right there. But what I do want to look at is, this is super important, 
if we take a vector and we divide it by its own normal, its own norm, then this produces, we say, a unit vector. And this unit vector has the property that its norm is 1. Okay. Um, now, to, to sort of prove that, it's, it's not too hard, but I am just going to state something. If I take the norm of a real number times a vector, then that is equal to taking the absolute value of the real number and multiplying it by the norm of the vector. And that's, that's the proof, that's the property that I'll, that I'll use here. So let's say I want to get the norm of v hat. So that's the norm of this over its own norm. How many times can I say norm? Well, this is just a real number. So in other words, it is the absolute value of the real number. So that's 1 over the norm times. And it doesn't matter. The, um, the norm is always positive, like the distance is always positive. So it doesn't matter that we have absolute values here. It's the same stuff. So this is essentially something divided by itself, which is 1. And then we have another property, which I'm going to briefly mention, and then we'll prove it later. And that is called the triangle inequality. So if you've done any real analysis, you'll probably be familiar with the triangle inequality. It's used in a lot of proofs. And that is, if I have two vectors, sum them up and get the norm. Is that equal to just the just the sum of their lengths? Well, think about numbers. 1 plus 2 has an absolute value of 3. Absolute value of 1, absolute value of 2. Yeah, that works. But, uh, okay, let's go negative 1, negative 2. Okay, negative 1, negative 2 is negative 3, the absolute value of that is 3, and then this would be 1 and 2, yep, that works. But if they have opposite signs, 2 and negative 1 sum together and cancel each other out, like Coke and Pepsi, okay? So this would have a magnitude of 1, but then on the right-hand side, this would be a magnitude of 1 plus 2 is 3. So the triangle inequality states that the resultant of summing two vectors together has a length which is less than the individual lengths. This is one of those things, it's just super cool, so I thought I'd talk about it, and I will prove it later in another video. But here's the idea. If I have a vector u, there it goes, and a vector v, there it goes, okay? The length of this side is the norm u, the length of this side is the norm v, and this sort of third side is the vector summation, the vector result of u plus v. Side note, we can start to think about summing vectors up as a series of translations. We move from here to here, and then from here to here. That's the same motion as going from the start point to the direct end point. Anyway, so if all these lengths were equal, then they would sort of be lying on a flat plane, we'd, a flat line. We'd have u, v, and u plus v together. That's if the lengths are equal. Um, but as you can see, the length is a little bit less, and that causes these lines to curl around, and this is, it makes a triangle. And that's why we call it the triangle inequality, basically. But anyway, I will go on and prove that a little bit later. For now, let's look at... Let's look at norms. So this is the code from last time. Let's just stick with, okay. Let's go, let's go here. Let's say, okay. Um, I'm gonna make another, I'm gonna use another library here as well. I'm gonna say, okay. Um, 
import peer pyre. It's just a wrapper here. Um, we'll go Yes, yeah, so we get the length of that vector v, that is the norm. And we will just go ahead and print the norm. Okay, so before I do this, let's have a look at it. Pythagoras' theorem, we have this component squared is 1, this component squared is 4, 1 plus 4 is 5, and so it should be the square root of 5. So let's print that out. Let's import math as well. Just to test. Oh, okay. What's going on here? I think... I think Pyre expects this to be a row vector, not a column vector. So in other words, horizontal. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. So as we can see, we use the vector length operation that returns the norm. And we can also calculate this by hand. So we can go norm 2 equals, um, take the square root of the first component squared plus the second component squared. And then if we have a larger vector, we'll just do more of that. So let's go ahead and print norm two. There we have it, we're getting the same thing. The only difference there is that in these last two, we are calculating 64-bit floats. This is a 32-bit float because that's what OpenGL needs. And it's fine. Okay, so um, the other thing, right, we've got that is let's take, let's normalize this. So we'll say v hat is um, v divided by the norm. We'll print that out. So again, I think about it, square root five is the norm of this vector. So the elements should be one over square root five, um, two over square root five. And that looks about right. So now to check this, we can go, um, this is a little bit excessive, but I'm, we're demonstrating stuff. Okay, so we'll go um, We'll print that out. So we expect this to be a length of one, possibly just very close to one because floating points are not exact. Um, but yeah, there we have it. So yeah. We've normalized it and it has a length of one, close enough to one. Okay, so yeah, hope you enjoyed that. And um, yeah, that's norms.